Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen and today we are going to go through the bootstrap challenges. Last time we got done with the JavaScript algorithms and data structures projects and we did every single one of these challenges. And now we're moving on to the front end libraries and starting with bootstrap. So what bootstrap is, is it's a pre-built CSS file basically that we can just link to in our HTML and then use it in our HTML files and use all their classes. So if I go to bootstrap, Dot com here. If I take a look at what this links to, it's just a giant CSS file. I know it's hard to see, but because it's like minimized, but it has just a bunch of CSS properties and classes that we can use in our HTML without having to write our own CSS. So that's what Bootstrap is. Let's uh, go to the first lesson. Use responsive design with Bootstrap fluid containers. Bootstrap has a class called container fluid, which is just a, it's just a responsive container. So for this challenge, all we want to do is have a div of class container fluid, and we want to wrap it around all of our HTML. So we'll put a the ending take here. And I believe that's all we have to do for this challenge. And you'll notice that container fluid isn't a class in our style tags, but since we link to, oh, actually we have to add this link in there too, so that we actually link to Bootstrap. I was a little bit confused there because I didn't see a, our link to it, but yeah, now that we link to it, we're, we have access to all of Bootstrap's classes, and that includes the container fluid class. So let's move on. Sweet. So make images mobile responsive. All we have to do for this is add the image responsive class to our image and it should work. So here's our image. It has a smaller image class and a thick green border class already. And we just want to add the image responsive class. Actually, we want to have a new image below this existing one and it'll have a source of this right here. And right now it's not responsive, but if we add the class in uh, as image responsive, um, oh, there now it, gets smaller, I guess. I think that's what it does now. Here, let me get rid of this quick. Yeah, so now it's not responsive. And then if I add it back in, then it actually fits inside that smaller screen. So that's it for this one. Let's go on. Center text with Bootstrap. This is done with the text center class. So we'll go down to our H2 and add a text center class to it. And there it moved over to the center. Let's go. Create a bootstrap button. We'll create a button underneath our large kitten photo. So we'll do a button element. It'll have the class of button and button default, and it has a text of light. So there is our bootstrap button, I guess. If I get rid of the button and button default classes, then it actually looks like that. But with the bootstrap classes in, it looks a little bit nicer. So let's go create a block element bootstrap button. For this challenge, we just want to add the button block class to our button. And now our button takes up the full width that it can. So let's move on. Yep. Taste the bootstrap button color rainbow. We want to change our button default class to the button primary class, and it'll change the color from this gray to a blue. So I'll just go down here, change default to primary, and now it's blue. There's a bunch of other colors like secondary, which is gray. There's a uh, warning, which is yellow. There's danger, which is red. Um, there's success, which is green. But for this challenge, we want it to be blue, which is primary. And let's move on. Call out optional actions with button info. For this challenge, we just want to add another button. It'll say info, and it will have the button info class instead of button primary. And now it's this lighter blue. So yeah, I guess that's just another color that Bootstrap has, the info color, which is just a light blue. But let's move on. Warn your users of a dangerous action with button danger. So this will make a red button. We just want to have another button with that class. Button danger with the text delete. And there's our delete button. There we go. Use the bootstrap grid to put elements side by side. For this challenge, we want to take our three buttons and put them side by side using bootstrap grid. And the way we do this is we wrap our three buttons within a div of class row. We have our starting div, class row, and our ending div. And then we want to put each button within its own div that has a class of column XS, so extra small, four, and do the ending div here. And I'll just copy and paste this down because we want to wrap all of these around these divs. And there, now they're side by side. This four here tells how big it should be or how much of the width it should take. So if I made this six and this five and this three, or yeah, I'll make this one actually. Then this button's super small, but the like is super big. In Bootstrap, it goes up to 12. You get 12 per row. So right here, six plus five plus one is 12. If we want them all equal lengths, we have to do four, four, and four. And now it looks nice. Let's move on. One of my div elements, oh, this one needs the slash here. 
There we go. Ditch custom CSS for bootstrap. For this challenge, we want to get rid of the red text class. We want to get rid of the P class and we can get rid of the smaller image class. And then instead we'll use classes that bootstrap gives us. We want to delete this P element. We want to remove the red text class from the H2 and replace it with the text primary class so that it's blue. And then instead of smaller image, we want to replace it with the image responsive class. And there we go. That should be all we have to do. Yep. Use a span to target inline elements. For this challenge, we want to take this word of love in the things cats love and wrap it within a span and then we'll give it the class of text danger and now love is red it's kind of tiny though let's run that sweet create a custom heading for this challenge we want to take our heading here and our image and put them on the same line and to do that we will wrap them within a div of class row and then we want to have our h2 element within a div of class column extra small 8 so I'll do div class equals all xs8 and make sure it's wrapped correctly and then for our image we'll do the same thing except this one will have a class of column xs4 and now they're on the same line sweet let's run that Oh yeah. Add font awesome icons to our buttons. To do this, we first need to link to the font awesome icons. In this case, they've already done it before uh, for us behind the scenes. And then what we can do is we can have this I element. So we'll put this I element next to our like text and it'll have a class of FAS and FA thumbs up. And there we have a thumbs up next to our like button or next to our text of like. I think that's what we had to do. Let's try it. Yep. So we add font awesome icons to all of our buttons. So now we want to add an info circle for info and a trash for our delete button. So I'll just copy this I element from the like, bring it down to info and our delete. And then we'll change the thumbs up to info circle and we'll change the thumbs up on this one to trash. And there we have a trash can and a info circle. So let's try that and sweet. Responsively style radio buttons. Right now we can't see our radio buttons because my face is in the way. So I'll fix that quick. All right, there's our radio buttons. We want to take them and nest them within a class of row and give them each a class of column extra small six. So we'll go down to these two radio buttons of indoor and outdoor and we'll give them a div of class row and then we'll put each of them around a div of class column xs six. So there we have column xs six around both of them with the ending closing takes. So let's try that out. See what they look like first of all. So they're they're here now instead of all in a line with the checkboxes. Let's try that. Yep. Responsively style checkboxes. This is the same as the last challenge except with the three checkboxes. So there we go. We have our class of row and our three column extra smalls. And let's try it out. After we look at it, of course, there's our three checkboxes now spaced out in a row. And let's run it. Cool. Style text inputs as form controls. For this challenge, we want to make this part look a lot nicer. And to do that, we'll make our submit button blue with an icon and we'll add a class to our to our text box. So we'll go down to our input of text and we'll give it a class equal to form control. So now it looks like this. We'll give our button a class of button, button primary. So now it's blue. And then we'll also have an icon for it. So we'll use our iTag and we'll have it have a class equal to FA paper plane. And we also might need another FA here. And there we go. There's our paper plane with a submit button. And that's all we have to do for this one. So let's try it out. Yep. Line up form elements responsively with bootstrap. For this challenge, we want to use the row and the column classes again. We'll go down to our text box and button part of the HTML and we'll wrap our input and submit button around a div with class of row. And then our input will have a class of column XS7 while our button will have a class of column XS5. And there we go. Now they're on the same row and the input field is bigger than the button part. So let's try that out. Yep. Create a bootstrap headline. We'll do an H3 here with a class of text primary and text center. And it'll have the text inside of it of jQuery playground. And there we go. Looks pretty nice. Let's run it. Yep. Now we'll nest it within a container fluid div. So we'll go div class equals container fluid and wrap it around with the closing tag. And there we go. Yep. Now we'll create a row underneath our headline. It'll be a class of row and that's it. Yep, split up our bootstrap row into two columns, each with a class of column XS6. So there we go, we have our two columns now. Yep, create bootstrap wells. 
Now inside of our columns, we'll have a div of class equal to well, and we'll see what that looks like. It's just uh, gray, I guess, and we'll add it to both of them. So there's our two wells, and let's move on. Add elements within your bootstrap wells. We'll just add three buttons to each of our wells. So there we have our three buttons inside of each of our wells. We don't have any text in them. That's why they look so dumb. But yeah, let's just go on. Apply the default bootstrap button style. So we'll just add class of button button default to all of these buttons. So there we go. They all have the class of button button default. And let's move on. Create a class to target with jQuery selectors. This usually isn't very necessary, but I guess we'll do it for this challenge. We'll just add target to all of these classes. So there we go. Now they all have the target class on them. All the buttons do. And let's do that. Add ID attributes to bootstrap elements. For this one, we'll add an ID of right well, or this is the left well, actually. The first one is the left well. And then we'll go down to our second well and do right well on it as an ID. And there we go. Yep, label our bootstrap wells. So here we'll do an H4 with a text of left well, hashtag left well. And then we'll do the same thing for the right well. So right here, we'll do right well. And that's all we have to do for this one. And let's run it. Yep, give each element a unique ID. For this one, we want to have our buttons have a unique ID on them. So we'll start with our first button and give it an ID of target one. And then we'll give our second button target two and our third button target three and so on. So we'll go ID of target two here and an ID of target three here, target four, target five and target six. And that's all we have to do for this one. Let's move on. Yep. Label our bootstrap buttons. We'll give our buttons the text of their ID. So this one will be target one and then target two and so on, target four. And I guess they should have the hashtags in front of them as well. And there we go, let's try that out. Yep, use comments to clarify code. So to do a comments in HTML, it's this, but we can do command slash to have it auto do it for us. I believe on Windows it's control slash, but yeah, this will say only change code above this line. And there we go. Yep, and there we go. We completed all the bootstrap challenges. That was uh, pretty easy. Next up, we have introduction to jQuery. jQuery is not really used that much anymore, but it's still useful to know. It's basically just another thing on top of normal JavaScript, and it helps with selecting HTML elements so that we can work with them and change them in our JavaScript code. But yeah, that's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you in the next video with jQuery.